Hello guys, welcome to Physics Grad. In this video, we are going to look at in more detail about canonical transformations and in particular, we are going to look at two different interpretations of a canonical transformation. Alright, so let us begin. So we already know that a canonical transformation takes us from one phase space, takes us from one phase space which I am going to call eta with coordinates uh, small p and q to another another phase space so to another phase space which I am going to call psi with coordinates capital Q and P okay so here let me write Q comma P that's the usual way we write it so this implies that if the state of the system at a given time was described by a point let's call it a in the phase space eta it can be equivalently equivalently described by corresponding point a dash in the phase space psi so what I mean by this is that <coughs> if we if this is our phase space eta wherein uh, uh, the system is in a particular state defined by the coordinates point A with having coordinates Q and P and now I am going to perform a canonical transformation which is going to take us to a new phase space psi and the same state that we describe in this particular phase space will be described by another point A dash uh, with the coordinates capital Q and capital P okay so we have gone from this pa uh, uh, phase space eta to phase space phi so this is what this is one way of looking at uh, canonical transformation and uh, this is the passive view of a canonical transformation so this kind of an interpretation of a canonical transformation is called the passive interpretation okay so this is the passive view of a canonical transformation this is one of the way in which we can understand or interpret what a canonical transformation does that is it takes us from one phase space to another phase space but the points in the corresponding phase space represent the system in the same state okay so here here both a and a dash represent the same state of the system okay however in our previous lectures we have seen that so we know that motion itself motion itself can be seen as a series of infinitesimal canonical transformations which is generated by the Hamiltonian function and the transformation is parameterized with respect to the continuous parameter time okay now when you look at the canonical transformation in this way what we are doing is that if this is our phase space eta and this is our initial point a which is q of t naught and p of t naught say and what we are going to do is infinitesimal canonical transformation in in uh, 
uh, in fact we are going to do a series of infinitesimal canonical transformation which gives us as we have seen uh, if if this if this infinitesimal canonical transformation is generated by the hamiltonian then we see that as uh, as our coordinates changes the coordinates changes in such a way that the new coordinates lie along the path which the system takes correct so let us say that after time t we have reached a point b which is uh, which which is the new coordinates q and p but these new coordinates are basically q of t and p of t okay provided we have used the hamiltonian function to generate this series of infinitesimal canonical transformation so this series of infinitesimal canonical transformation will be a series of points in the same phase space which is along the path which is taken by the system okay so the transformation which takes us from the point a to b is a canonical transformation because it's a series of infinitesimal canonical transformation but here instead of defining a new phase space which we call uh, psi uh, we have a canonical transformation that relates the two points in the same phase space we have a canonical transformation that relates the two points in the same phase space same phase space so when we interpret our canonical transformation in this uh, form we are actually not going from one phase space to another but we are saying that the two points are somehow related by the canonical transformation but the two points are in the same phase space okay so when we interpret it in this way this is the this is the active interpretation of a canonical transformation okay why because because as uh, as the system uh, here we here it uh, implies that uh, this canonical transformation uh, is actually making the system move along a particular path okay so in that sense we call it as the uh, active interpretation uh, because the system is moving from uh, one point to another point in the same phase space okay so because the system moves from one point QP to another QP in same phase space. Okay, so this kind of an interpretation is called the active interpretation, and the one which we have seen here is the passive interpre interpretation. Okay, so in the active interpretation, we don't have two different phase space, but instead we are having two points related by canonical transformation in the same phase space okay of course in the active interpretation this will be given by another phase space psi where this b corresponds to the point a dash and in in the phase space psi the point a dash represents the same state as point a but whereas in the phase space eta the the state represented by point a and b are different okay because no two different points in phase space can represent the same state of the system so let us write that down so clearly clearly a and b describe two different uh, states of the system okay so 
note that uh, active interpretation active interpretation is not always useful why because let us consider an example and it will become clear so if you consider the example where we are going from the coordinates x y z to the coordinates r theta phi now of course this is a canonical uh, in fact this is a contact transformation so when we have such a transformation if we use the active interpretation then this new coordinates r theta phi must lie in the same phase space which is in our case a cartesian uh, coordinate system but that will not make any sense because theta and phi do not have the same dimensions as y and z okay so mathematically it makes sense but physically it doesn't make sense because the dimensionality do not match okay so if we use active interpretation uh, r theta phi must lie on cartesian system cartesian coordinate system okay of course this can be valid if you consider it as an abstract transformation where there is no physical meaning to the variables r theta phi but here in physics there's always some meaning to any quantity that we describe and in this case the dimensionality of theta and phi are not the same as dimensionality of y and z and therefore the active interpretation will not give us any meaningful result okay so in such instances we have to resort to only the passive interpretation where we define a new phase space consisting of a uh, spherical coordinate system okay all right so so here but this does not physically make sense okay so all right so let us understand this with the another way that is we are going to consider some function which is going to be dependent on what state the system is in and see how this function uh, is described when we consider passive canonical transformation or the active uh, interpretation of the canonical transformation so consider consider a function which i am going to call u that depends that depends on state of the system okay so this implies that the functional form functional form of the function u will be different in different phase space okay so to understand this consider the example where u is equal to t which is the kinetic energy with respect to a phase space eta which is the coordinate system and if i consider the case of uniform circular motion where x uh, y it is following along this circle then this is going to be half m x dot square plus half m y dot square <coughs> in terms of the momentum this is going to be p x square by 2m plus p y square by 2m but if i make a canonical transformation to polar coordinates then i am going to have t as equal to so if i use uh, my r theta coordinates then in this case r is going to be basically the radius and theta is going to be this angle so in this particular phase space my kinetic energy t will be equal to half m r theta dot square which is p theta square by 2m now clearly if the functional form had to remain the same then by this formula for it to remain the same here it should have become p theta square by 2m plus p 
pr square by 2m but here there is only p theta square by 2m which shows that when we when we are working with two different phase spaces the functional form of our kinetic energy is going to change okay so therefore the functional form of a function which depends on the states of the system is going to be different in different phase spaces okay but the value the value of u will be the same so when i mean this if i consider our xy coordinate system if i calculate the state of the system at this particular point and the corresponding point happens to be let's say in r theta let's say this particular point then these two points the kinetic energy corresponding to these two points must remain the same so therefore the value of t eta will be equal to the value of t i'm going to call this as psi t psi and if this is our t eta the value is going to be the same provided the two points that you consider are the corresponding mapping from our canonical transformation okay so i hope that this is clear so this implies that in passive interpretation in passive interpretation u eta of pq is equal to u psi of pq okay so where this point if i in transform it using canonical transformation corresponds to this point okay but but the functional form form of u eta is not equal to the functional form of u u psi okay so this is this is the main thing to notice in in the case of passive interpretation but in active interpretation since we are in the same phase space same phase space the functional form is the same okay which means if we are only in this phase space and we consider this particular point and this particular point as the canonical transform with respect to uh, generated by the hamiltonian as we have seen before then clearly we are in the same phase space so the kinetic energy the the form of the kinetic energy is going to remain the same in this point and in this point okay but their value however is going to change how of course in this case it is it is not changing because we are considering uniform circular motion but in general if you consider uh, some uh, randomly moving object uh, who is moving with the varying speed then of course at different points in phase space the kinetic energy values is going to be different however the expression for the kinetic energy is going to remain the same which is px square by 2m plus py square by 2m okay so but u eta of pq the value is not going to be equal to u eta of capital p and q okay all right so i hope that's clear so if now let us consider if the transformation from a to b is infinitesimal canonical transformation then so so far we had considered b to be a finite canonical transformation in the sense that a series of infinitesimal canonical transformation but now let us consider that the point b corresponds to an infinitesimal canonical transformation from point a if this is the case then we can define the the change in the value of the function u okay so do u is going to be u of b minus u of a okay in terms of the vector notation which we have seen before this will be u of eta plus del eta minus u of eta okay because b corresponds to the transformed variable 
So now if I expand this function using Taylor's expansion up to uh, you know first order infinitesimals okay so let me write that down expanding in Taylor's series up to first order up to first order infinitesimals we will get u of eta plus del eta is approximately equal to u of eta plus uh, dou u by dou eta transpose del eta okay because this must be a number because it's a value of the function so this is a row vector dotted with uh, or basically this is an inner product of this vector and this vector that is a row vector multiplied with the column vector okay so this implies that our dou u is going to become dou u by dou eta transpose times del eta okay and in our previous lectures we had seen that if we use the generating function f2 is equal to summation over qi pi plus epsilon g then the we can find our del eta as equal to epsilon uh, j hat dou g by dou eta where of course the j is a matrix 2s cross 2s matrix having these blocks okay which we have already seen in our previous lectures so going by this definition our dou u is going to now become equal to epsilon dou u by dou eta transpose j hat dou g by dou eta but this as we have seen is nothing but the matrix representation of a Poisson bracket. So this implies dou u is equal to epsilon times Poisson bracket of u and g. Okay. So I am going to stop here in this lecture. So here we have basically seen two different ways of interpreting a canonical transformation. We can either interpret it passively wherein we say that uh, the transformation takes us from one phase space to another phase space and the corresponding points represents the same state of the system or we can look at it as relating two different points in the same phase space where the two where now the two points represent two different states of the system okay and we had also seen that if you consider a function which depends on the state of the system in the case of passive transformation the function defined at this point and at this point will have the same value but different functional form that is different dependence on q and p and capital q and p whereas in the active interpretation the functional form remains the same but the value is going to change and in the case of infinitesimal canonical transformation the change in the value can be expressed using Poisson bracket uh, expression of this form where g is a part of the generating function used to generate the infinitesimal canonical transformation so that's it for this video thank you for watching see you next time